In this series of videos, we're talking about process costing. And in our first video, I kind of identified how process costing is different from job order costing. What I thought I'd do in this video is walk through a problem on process costing. And you'll notice something that says number seven, six marks, 10 minutes. This is an old exam question. I, I teach management accounting, uh, intro to management accounting, and this is a question I've used in an exam uh, setting in the past. I changed some of the numbers to make it easier for our video, but it's the same uh, basic question. Um, so let's read through the question, and when we do it, we're gonna fill out what's called the production report. Uh, I'm a very nice guy. You probably got that from watching these videos. You thought, oh, what a nice person to make these videos. I'm even nice as a teacher. I give my students this template to fill in to help them do their production report. So I give this exact template that looks just like this, and the students get to fill it in. Your teacher might not be as nice. They might make you memorize this report, uh, but certainly you'll have to understand how to make a production report. Even if your teacher doesn't give you a template like this, I recommend using this template. So if you look below the video, I'll have linked this problem and this template, and you can download both the files, you can use them, you're free to use them for any uh, educational purpose that you see fit. So please feel free to download those files. You can print them out and fill them in by hand, or you can do what I'm gonna do, which is just type in the numbers in Excel. Okay, let's read through this problem. Six marks, 10 minutes. Uh, let's hope we get six out of six. Uh, Smith Inc. uses the weighted average method in its process costing system. Now that's key. There's actually a couple of methods I'm aware of here. There's also one called the FIFO method, first in, first out method. I'm not gonna do a video on that. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan of FIFO. It certainly works, it certainly does the job. It's a different way of doing it. It's, you, would, you could still answer it using the same template as I'm gonna show you how to use, but the way you go about it is slightly different. But that won't be the focus of my videos. I don't uh, teach that method in my class, so we're gonna hone in on the weighted average method. If you do have to use, learn FIFO, you're gonna have to go elsewhere to, to get uh, FIFO. Uh, anyway, Smith uh, Inc. uses the weighted average method in its process costing system. The following data concern the operations of the company's first processing department for the month of January 2013. Now remember from the last video, we said companies that use process costing don't track their costs by job. They don't say, okay, what did, you know, for example, we make pens. What did this one pen cost and how much material, labor, and overhead did I add to this one pen? They track it by department and they say, okay, what were the total costs of the department? How many pens did I send through that department during the month? And you can figure out the cost per pen that way. And that's what our production cost report is all about. So we're just looking at the first department and there's probably several departments in this company. We're just looking at the first one. Uh, okay, so it says work in process beginning, units in process 2000, stage of completion 90 and 20. Here's a little trick. Maybe it's not a trick question, but uh, the work in process beginning, if they give you a percentage, if you're doing weighted average method, as we are, we don't use it. So these percentages are just kind of red herrings. I don't have any idea what just happened to that text. Oh, there it is. Weighted average method, we don't use it at all. My ink tools just went away. There we go. Uh, so. Uh, you can kind of ignore that part. You can say, okay, well, these uh, the 90 and the 20% don't even bother with it. It's not uh, going to be a factor in our answer here. Um, anyway, that's something that the first time you do, you're never going to know that, right? This is all stuff that I believe you need to practice to get good at. But the units in process at the beginning, that matters. Uh, let's read on. There's some costs in beginning inventory. You can see I spell labor L-A-B-O-U-R. That's because I'm Canadian. Word doesn't realize that. Uh, reading on. Units started. Units completed. And there's some more units. There's some more dollar amounts there. Units in process ending. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Not sure what I'm going to do with that. Uh, and some more information. Okay. It says prepare a production report for the department using the weighted average method. That's exactly what we're going to do. So what I'd like to do is start with my production report and we're gonna just try to fill it in as best we can. And I'll teach you how to fill one of these in and I'll explain what it is as we go. 
So uh, the first thing is, it, it says production report at the top, but there's actually a three line title. First comes the name of the company, and the name of our company is Smith Inc. Smith Inc. Next is the name of the financial statement or the report. We're doing a production report. We might even say which department it is. So it's the first department, whatever that happens to be, the widgets department. If it's maybe a Colt company, maybe it's the, the department that mixes the sugar into the drink or whatever. Um, and finally, a date. Uh, and this is going to be for the year, or I guess for the month. For the month ended January 31st, 2013. So let's fill that in as well. For the month ended January 31st, 2013. Marvelous, we're off to a great start. So the first part of our chart, we're doing a little reconciliation. So the first part of this chart to fill out is just right here. I'm gonna highlight it all in yellow. We need to fill in this section. We're not gonna fill in any of the cells on the right. We're not gonna go any further. We're just gonna do this little reconciliation at the top. I want you to keep in mind up to here, it's all units. So I'm not even going to look for it. I saw there were some costs in the question. I'm not worried about costs. I'm worried about units here. If I see dollar signs written in this area and I'm marking it, it's easy for me to mark wrong. I go, oh, they put dollars where there should be units. They are totally wrong. Um, okay, so let's fill in the units to account for. Uh, so units to account for from beginning whip. Let's see, whip beginning units, uh, 2000. Okay, well, let's fill that in. To a thousand units started during the year. Uh, well, those are dollar signs. I'm not going to worry about them. I'm not worrying about the 90 and the 20 percent. Units started 23,000. Oh dear, two, three, oh, oh, oh. Total units to account for. Well, two plus 23. Total those two numbers. So equals 2,000 plus 23,000. It's 25,000. Units accounted for as follows. Well units completed and transferred out. Uh, units completed and transferred out, 20,000. Okay, let's fill that in. Uh, ending whip. Now I go down and I see work in process ending. Units in process, question mark. Ah, what do I do with that? Well, the answer is actually up here. I have units to account for. From beginning whip, 2 plus 23, I got 25. And you can see the line there. Let me highlight this one uh, pink or something, different color. Uh, uh, sure. Ah, there we go. Pink. Total units to account for, 25,000. I go units accounted for, completed, 20, ending whip. Total units accounted for. Hmm. Total units to account for is 25. Total units accounted for is going to have to be. 25. So I can calculate my ending whip to go, okay, 20 plus this has got to be 25. I can infer my ending whip is 5,000. So going back to the question, this unit's in process that they didn't tell us, it's five grand. Uh, okay, let me just unhighlight everything and we will continue. So that's the first part of our production report. And I actually, I do want to highlight these two because they do have to match. And I just want you to keep that in mind that the total units to account for has to match the total units accounted for. Again, your instructor might not give you this chart, but I can tell you that production report questions, or if you have to prepare one or figure out this stuff for process costing, it works really nicely if you fill it into this template. Okay, now the only hard part. Uh, these are really easy uh, questions, but the only hard part and the only part that's tricky to wrap your head around is something called equivalent units. And life would be so easy if at the end of the year we didn't have any whip, we didn't have any work in process. We were just, we started units, we finished them, and there was nothing that was half finished, no, no whip. Uh, but because companies have whip, and certainly when we're doing this type of question, the company will have whip for sure, and because some of the whip is not completed, we've got to do something called compute equivalent units. So uh, here's an example of equivalent units. Let me just do it this way. Let's say I had, um, let me get my pen here. Let's say I had whip and I had started but not finished 10,000 units. And let's further say that I'm making uh, ice sculptures. 
weird example, but okay. I'm making ice sculptures. And I started 10,000 units. In other words, I got 10,000 blocks of ice to make my ice sculptures. Uh, if I've started making 10,000 ice sculptures, I obviously have a lot of employees to do this. I couldn't start 10,000 just by myself, but I have 10,000 employees making 10,000 ice sculptures and they started, but it's a year end and they didn't finish and they're gonna continue the next day, uh, you know, into February or whatever, wherever the next month. Well, those 10,000 ice sculptures, if they're gonna start making ice sculptures, they've got to have 100% of the material to start. Right? If you're making ice sculptures, you need all the ice before you can even get started. So those 10,000 units, even though they're not done, they're 100% done as it relates to materials. Let's say they were only half done in terms of the labor and the overhead. Half done in terms of DL and overhead. Well, you're going to learn in process costing we actually don't s distinguish between direct labor and overhead all the time we combine them and if you look back to earlier notes or, or just you know chapter one stuff in most textbook there's actually a calculation it's dl and moh when you combine them they're called conversion costs so we've got our ice sculptures we've started 10,000 we have 10,000 blocks of ice they're half finished in terms of the carving uh, they're 50% done in terms of the labor and the overhead in terms of the conversion. And if you think about the term, what does it take to convert a raw material into a finished good? In other words, what does it take to convert a block of ice into an ice sculpture? It takes somebody's labor and some indirect costs. It takes labor and overhead. So that's why they call it conversion costs. It's the cost of making a raw material into a finished good. So now the question, and this is the crux of these production reports, we have to determine how many equivalent units we've got. Well, in terms of material, we've got 10,000 units that we've got 100% of the material. 10,000 times 100% means we've got 10,000 equivalent units in terms of material, right? We've got 10,000 units worth of material sitting there. In terms of conversion, in terms of labor and overhead, we've got 10,000 units that are half done. That's the equivalent of having 5,000 units that are totally done in terms of work, right? 10,000 units, I've done half the work. That's, for, for the purposes of these calculations, that's the equivalent of having 10,000 times 50% that's the equivalent of having 5,000 units that are totally done. So we call those 5,000 equivalent units. And that's in terms of conversion. If you've understood this concept, you're going to do just fine when it comes to uh, preparing our production report. Let's go back to the template and let's deal with the equivalent units that are found in this specific problem. All right, so we got to do some equivalent unit work. Uh, units, oops, did I? What happened there? I think I, I just overwrote that or I hit delete by mistake. Anyway, that's what it looked like before. Um, the units completed and transferred out, I, if I'm thinking about equivalent units, I don't know what happened here to my heading. I got to pull it down a bit more. There we go. In terms of equivalent units, my direct materials if I've completed and transferred out, I must have used 100% of the direct materials, right? I wouldn't complete and transfer out if I didn't use, if they weren't 100% done. So in terms of direct materials and in terms of conversion, they have to be 100% done. Otherwise I wouldn't say that I wouldn't transfer them out if they weren't done, right? I only transfer out when it's done. So it's gotta be 100% done. In terms of ending whip though, if it's still whip, it means it's not done. We gotta see what percentage they are done. So let's go to our ending whip and it says our ending whip stage of completion with respect to materials is 80 percent complete so if i have 5,000 units that are 80 percent complete that's the equivalent of having 4,000 completed units so our materials again if i have 5,000 units they're 80 percent complete that's like 4,000 units 
Uh, 5,000 units that are 50% complete as the conversion. Remember, conversion is labor and overhead. 5,000 times 50% is 2,500 equivalent units. All right, that's a key moment in preparing these things. Uh, you might want to pause it, replay it, make sure you've understood those equivalent units. So our total equivalent units, I skip a line here, 20 plus four is 24,000. I guess I don't have to add that in in a formula. This is 22,500. Uh, that's our total equivalent units. And you might look at this and say, well, we're wasting a lot of space, and we are. In fact, when you do this, uh, if you are using my template and doing it my way, you will never put anything in these uh, rows. These rows that are sitting empty will always sit empty. We're done the first half of the problem. We've only kind of filled in one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve 12 cells. Uh, not a lot of calculations and not a lot of work. You just got to know what to put where, but we're halfway home. So these units, I've done the equivalent of 24,000 units worth of work in terms of materials and 22,500 units worth of work in terms of conversion. Some questions will split up labor and overhead to, if, if they, they feel there's a difference there as well, but often labor and overhead just get lumped together here. Okay, uh, let's move on and let's take a look at the costs and how to account for the costs. Um, maybe actually I'm going to split up the costs in the second half of this into a new video. So I'm going to stop this video here. In the next part, we're going to complete the production report and I'm going to explain kind of what's going on in the, the uh, bit of analysis of this production report. So we'll stop this video here. We'll continue the production report in the